So I train a lot in the gym, so in the climbing gym indoors. Um, and basically it's um, routes set by route setters that you work through to train for outdoor climbing. What that allows you to do is work specific moves in order to get them into a collection of skills that you can then take out to use on the rock. It also allows me to campus and hang off very small holes in order to get strong to climb better. Some people either use the gym just as a gym, so they'll go, I just climb up and down the walls and I just enjoy it. And that's actually becoming very, very popular with the rise of uh, the Olympic Games. We have what's called a fingerboard, which is basically just some slots in the wall that you hang off to get strong. And you just hang off them for like eight seconds maybe until you can't hang on them anymore. Bouldering, uh, anyone can rock up at the local climbing gym and uh, rent a pair of shoes, you might have to watch some videos and you can just have a go. Because bouldering is on individual pieces of rock that are often found in valleys, it makes it really accessible. So it's really easy to get into and you can generally park up and walk there in about 10 minutes. Where with tread climbing, these big crags on the mountain are often a lot harder to find and also could take a few hours to walk in and out of. To a point, um, bouldering is a form of track climbing it's just lower down um, but for me what bouldering gives you is uh, the ability to really test yourself so it tests your physical and mental game um, to their absolute limits so you'll stay low down but you'll pull incredibly hard and work the hardest possible move for that scenario but once you climb past where a pad might save you it does become tread climbing you end up doing what's called soloing so I actually did that on a slab it's like less than vertical but I chose to climb it without traditional protection and that becomes soloing so high balling is basically a really high boulder and so you've still got just got the pad to protect you but it's really really high up it's not quite as high as say you were track climbing or sport climbing so it's not worth bringing along a rope because you'd only be protected for a small amount of it anyway so we take pads and then as you get towards the top of them, you've really got to be careful that you don't fall. A low ball on the other hand is really, really low down. So you can often get away without a pad. And in fact, pads can sometimes get in the way. So say you're on a roof and you're climbing underneath this roof, you do it without a pad and you'll just be on your back climbing round. So the easiest way to assess the danger of a climbing route is to use the guidebook where they actually take in the risk or the danger of the climb. So for example, a climbing route would be given a technical grade as well as a danger grade. So an E15A is um, technically quite easy, but dangerous and sparse on gear. Also, the guidebooks would say if a particular route is really chossy, which means if it's got lots of loose rock, and if it does, you've got to take precautions by um, wearing a helmet. People carry chalk bags, which is basically just filled with loose chalk. This dries all the moisture off your hands, which means you get much better friction on the rock rather than just sliding off when you go and grab a hold. So the main thing to do before I climb is check the weather forecast. This is because if it's going to be wet weather, it makes the rock a lot slippier. Another thing is checking an OS map and a compass to make sure you know where you're going. You also need to make sure you've told somebody a rough ETA of when you're going to be returning home. 